happiness through curiosity on TRS clips. I remember in 1996 or 97, there was a Veer Savarkar movie also, which my mum took me for, and it's one of my earliest memories in life. Achha. Um, it's I think it's called Anu Kapoor if I'm not mistaken. He plays okay. Veer Savarkar, and it's a Malayalam film that's dubbed in Hindi. Okay. And I highly recommend people watch it mm. because they've shown a very um, raw image of him. Uh, they've shown him in Kala Pani, which was mm. the jail in uh, the Port Andamans. Play. Yeah. Um, they used to make the prisoners do a uh, oil extraction. Kolhu ka bell punishment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'd love for you to expand on it as mm. well. But it's basically like a sort of a torture technique where they make you extract oil from seeds, yeah. uh, and then when he doesn't comply and he doesn't give them information about the uh, Indian Revolution, they actually tie him upside down on the uh, extraction device yeah. and make sure his head. Rubs against the ground, and he gets dragged along with the machine, and his body is used to actually extract the oil from the seeds. Yeah, and I saw this as a four-year-old man. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I was just like, "Whoa, what has gone on in this country before I got here?" <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it gave you a very dark image of the Indian freedom struggle, yeah. and I'm sure there's so many things that don't even make it to the world of films. Yeah, which is why now I need to bring you into the actual meat of this episode. You've written an entire book on Veer Savarkar. History books don't mention him. <laughs> Very casual, random mentions. You hear about him when you live in a city like Mumbai. Yeah. But um, not as much as you should. Mm. There's a lot of Gen Zs we are watching the show. Teenagers who watch this show. What's the truth about Veer Savarkar that Indians should know? Well, here was a man who started India's first organized secret society. Uh, which was called the Abhinav Bharat. Uh, initially, Mitra Mela, which later became Abhinav Bharat. He led the first ever student bonfire against foreign clothes. When we talk of bonfire, we only think of Gandhi and the you know uh, bonfire of clothes. But in 1905, as a student of Ferguson College in Pune, uh, this man had done that for which he even got rusticated from college. Uh, and then five years that he was in London um, as a law student, uh, he. led literally the revolutionary movement sitting there and got all these other uh, people i mentioned uh, earlier who were there with him shamji krishna verma and all of them uh, into this entire movement and uh, wrote this seminal book on the uh, you know after researching british documents uh, on the 1857 uprising gave it a respectability by calling it the first war of indian independence and that book ranveer became literally the the bhagavad gita for all future revolutionaries whether it was uh, you know uh, bhagat singh who got the second edition of it published or even rash bihari bose and netaji subhash chandra bose who got it translated into tamil and japanese and all kinds of languages and how a revolution needs to be structured the entire prescription was there in that book so someone who had contributed so much and 12 long years uh, in kalapani 2 years in indian mainland jail so 14 years of imprisonment and then 13 years after he comes out he is kept under captivity and house arrest in ratnagiri in maharashtra where he could not even go out of the borders of ratnagiri so just imagine a young man who is prom, uh, you know so wanting to become a barrister goes to london uh, is caught by the british and uh, unfairly tried and 27 years of his life are snuffed out his degrees are snatched away from him the law degree the graduation degree from ferguson so on paper he was just a metric pass his entire family property confiscated and so when he and his elder brother go away to kalapani the the women of the family uh they literally had to beg uh you know to eke out a livelihood they didn't even utensils were taken away and uh, auctioned literally brought to the streets uh so this is a sacrifice not only of him but also his entire family his wife his sister in law and all of them yeshu vahini um and all these people and so easily today sitting in air conditioned rooms people pass judgment saying he was a traitor he was a you know stooge and all of that which i think is grossly unfair what is their argument i mean the fact that uh, is mentioned that he wrote mercy petitions to uh, buy out his uh, you know liberty from jail and so on which uh, i think is a is a flawed argument because these were petitions that commonly a lot of political prisoners wrote those days it was not something that exclusively he wrote and in my book uh, the first volume of the two volume biography on savarkar i have 
mentioned all the petitions in toto uh, there were six or seven that he wrote so just like you can have a lawyer or today you can have a bail application a lot of people uh, used to file up uh, you know these petitions which were applications and in those petitions uh, your viewers can actually read those and there was nowhere an apology uh, in fact the british records themselves say that when they came uh, one man called reginald cradock who comes all the way to interview him he in his official jotting says i interviewed mr savarkar and he shows no regret or repentance or remorse for what he has done so why would the british want to write that about him if he he could have prostrated and said mai baap mujhe chhod do yahan se so but he didn't do that so and then most of these petitions he was also filing on behalf of other younger people uh, you know young revolutionaries who didn't know english who didn't know the law so this man was called bada babu uh, you know who had studied uh, you know law and he knew english and he, he could be their spokesperson so in fact in a 1917 petition he says uh, if my name constitutes an obstacle in the release of all the other prisoners then delete my name and release the others and that would give me as much pleasure as my own release would secure so that clearly shows he was talking on behalf of all the other people but this is constantly brought out um, you know to uh, demonize him and you spoke about kala pani ranveer and the the atrocities there not only to savarkar but all the other only the revolutionaries were housed in kala pani mind you no single congressman yeah. was sent there hold on just hold this thought because i want to go back to this debate of yes. uh, where does veer savarkar actually stand in the indian history yes uh textbook basically mm. when i was doing my research for this episode the word that repeatedly came up along with him was hindutva yeah and i feel in the modern day hindutva doesn't mean what it actually meant back then mm. like see now that i even use the word hindutva there's a lot of listeners who probably switched off <laughs> because they associate hindutva with uh hindus being against other religions like islam christianity sikhism buddhism etc and you know honestly to some degree that is what hindutva has become for a lot of hindus out there today mm. who are against other religions who want to have this whole hindu nationalism thing going on in the country but back then i believe hindutva meant something very different and he was inspired by the ideals of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj yeah uh, and at that time muslims christians sikhs hindus were all fighting together mm. so i am sure that there was no uh, religious sentiment behind what he did but i'd love to know this hindutva angle on veer savarkar i mean hindutva uh, the way it was envisaged by him he wrote this um, very slim booklet called essentials of hindutva who is a hindu while he was in jail and while all his other writings were in uh, marathi this was one he wrote in english for a pan india audience because that was the time when this very dangerous movement that was going on in the country called the khilafat movement uh, which gandhi had uh, led with the idea of bringing hindu muslim unity but it had uh, very uh, you know dangerous ramifications the seeds of partition were almost i think uh, uh, crystallized around that time because of the the way it was led where on a communal issue uh, of who will sit at in the uh, as the sultan or the caliph of uh, uh, you know uh, turkey which the british had won in war you were bartering um, you know muslim support for the freedom movement so a lot of muslims did not participate uh, till then in the freedom movement the uh, very little membership of the congress too so the uh, i think gandhi's idea was if you show them this uh, little carrot saying it's a cause that is very uh, dear to some of you so we will support you for that in return you know you participate in the non cooperation movement now and in return he had promised that within one year the country will become free and we will establish a caliphate a pan islamist uh, you know a, a very wahhabi kind of a movement to establish a caliphate there why should we in india support something like that but that was done and when both these things did not work his promises there were lots of uh, you know hindu genocides that happened in the 1920s including the mopla uh, you know um, carnage in malabar and different parts of india and the hindus were almost being led like a pied piper to their you know leading the rats to their uh, destruction and that's when savarkar comes up with this document of what what hindutva is which right at the beginning he says this has nothing to do with the theological aspects of hinduism uh, as a religion or the you know matters of soul super soul all of that this is more of a cultural and a national identity marker so to say you need to have your devotion your affiliation to this nation those who consider this landmass as their punya bhumi not by religion 
बट बाई योर एफिलियेशन यू डोंट केयर वेदर टर्की में कौन सुल्तान बैठ रहा है यूर थिंकिंग ऑफ दिस कंट्री योर पुण्य भूमि एंड योर पितृभूमि और एनसेस्ट्रल वे योर एनसेस्टर्स कम फ्रॉम दैट पर्सन इज अ हिंदू ही और शी कैन बी जैन मुस्लिम पारसी सिख वॉट एवर एल्स बट कल्चरली एंड नेशनली दे वुड बी टर्म्ड एज अ हिंदू अकॉर्डिंग टू सावरकर बिकॉज दे फ्रॉम हिंदुस्तान हिंदुस्तान एंड द वर्ल्ड सॉ अल हिंद राइट फ्रॉम वाउ द पर्शियन एंड अदर सॉज दिस वॉज टू दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वॉज कॉल्ड हिंद and so people from there were hindu for him of course uh, you know that that the very fact that there's a religion by the same name pre- complicates the matter but that was hindutva uh, hindutva is hinduism that resists uh, you know all kinds of uh, predatory moves on it and also uh, anything that uh, looks at hindu unification because savarkar's role even uh, you know in ratnagiri uh, in the 13 years that i mentioned was on caste eradication very few people today hindutva is equated with uh, you know uh, manuvad and all of that while in reality here was a man who for 13 years uh, stood for a complete elimination of caste not just untouchability as gandhi was advocating but removal of all kinds of and unifying the entire hindu society as one uh, one strong unit so i think the 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 misunderstandings that we have of this term as it grew uh is very unfortunate and we tag him with uh, whatever as you said today's agenda and and today politics also enters that so much so that complicates things further so if you enjoy this video subscribe to trs clips for more